Since ancient times, mankind has been refining precious metals. Gold, and then more recently, platinum group metals. For centuries, the refining has always been done with highly corrosive acids. Now however, you can refine your gold and platinum group metals, to very high purity, with the salt system refining process. This process utilizes salt water and electricity, rather than harsh acids to refine the metal. This video will provide very simple, and easy to follow, detailed instructions on the process. However, before we begin, let's go over the parts that come with the system. Parts include Workstation With spot plate Precious metal test solution Ammonia test solution Pipette Stirring rod Hot plate magnetic stirrer Beaker Core Filter pouch Spin bar Assembly Cathode cap with cathode Quadratic precipitant GC salt Catalyst Measuring spoons Measuring cup Pitcher Tongs Precipitation cap And thermometer Electronic scale A few items are required, but not included with the salt system. These include Regular ammonia, not the soapy kind Water And lastly A DC power source, such as a rectifier, or car battery charger At least 10 amps continuous Refining in salt water Is a simple and easy procedure But like anything new, it can be a little intimidating Especially since you are working with gold Don't worry even if you screw up massively, the only way to lose your gold is to literally, throw it away. Just take your time, follow the instructions, and you'll do fine. And if you have any questions, just contact Tech Support. They will be happy to help you. And, unlike me, they are actual, real people. The gold refining process has two basic steps. Dissolving the impure gold, and then converting only the gold content to particles, leaving the other metals dissolved. The first process in refining gold is dissolution of the metal. This is done in the core. Direct current is applied, positive to the gold, and negative to the cathode. Salt ions are attracted to the cathode, and these ions are small enough to pass through the pores of the ceramic molecular sieve. The various metal ions dissolve into solution. These ions are too large to travel through the sieve. They remain dissolved within the salt water. After the metal has dissolved, a selective precipitant is added, converting the gold content back into solids, in the form of heavy particles. The other metals remain dissolved. The solution is then decanted to recover the gold mud. The mud is dried and then melted. The salt system is an excellent stone removal system. Unlike aqua regia, even soft stones, like opals, turquoise and pearls, will not be damaged by the solution. To refine rings, 
and remove the stones. We will string them on a wire, so that we can make electrical contact. The wire should be 8 gauge or thicker. It should be either silver or titanium. Those areas of the wire, that are not in contact with the rings, should be coated with either silicone sealant, or heat shrink tubing. Leaving wire exposed, will acidify the solution, causing a chlorine, or bleach type odor. So it's preferable, to coat the wire. With the salt system, you can also refine ingots, either individually, or at the same time as refining rings. As with rings, refining ingots, requires electrical contact. Use 8 gauge, or thicker, coated, copper wire. You can solder the wire, either using a torch, and silver solder. Or you can solder the wire, using a soldering iron, and dick solder. Lead, or lead tin solder, cannot be used because it will not stick. Cover the exposed portion of the wire, with either silicone sealant, or heat shrink tubing. Core. Filter pouch. Spin bar base. Spin bar. Mix 1400 milliliters of tap water with 14 ounces of juicy salt. Add salt water to the cathode chamber first. Then, add salt water to the anode chamber. Place the beaker on the stirrer hot plate. Turn on the magnetic stirrer. That's the left knob. And turn the knob clockwise, just a little, just enough to get the stir bar spinning. You can use the tongs to pick up and reposition the stir bar, if necessary. Place the cathode cap on the core. Immerse your gold in the salt water. With the current off, the red positive wire goes to the gold. The black negative wire goes to the cathode. With the current still off, turn both your amps and volts all the way to maximum. Turn on the power. You will get a reading of around 10. Confirming that your electrical connection is fine. Now, lift your gold out of the water. Pour one quarter teaspoon of catalyst on the gold. Then immerse the gold back into the salt water. The use of catalyst is essential to the dissolving process. Catalyst is like a starter motor for a car. Without catalyst, the base metals in your carat gold, the copper, zinc, and other metals, will dissolve. But the gold content will remain undissolved. Typical dissolving time, is between 1 and 2 hours, per ounce or 30 grams, of metal. The higher the amps, the faster it will dissolve. The larger your gold surface area, the higher the amps will be, and the faster it will dissolve. You can raise your metal, at any time, to check on the dissolving progress. You don't even need to turn off the current. If refining an ingot, the amps will go to zero or near zero, when the dissolving is finished. If refining rings however, the amps will read a very low, but never zero, p. 
because the exposed portion of the silver wire will still conduct current. Now, let's recover the gold. To do that, we need to convert the dissolved gold into solid particles, leaving the other metals dissolved. This is called selective precipitation. Turn off the power, and then remove the electrical leads. While wearing rubber gloves, to protect your hands from stains, lift the core, from the beaker. Then place it on a dinner plate, or something similar, so it doesn't leave stains. Add one ounce of quadratic precipitant for every ounce of dissolved metal. Place the precipitant cap on the beaker. Then turn on the heat. Heat the solution to about 180 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 82 degrees centigrade. At this temperature, precipitation is generally complete, within about 30 to 60 minutes. The color of the solution usually, but not always, changes from green to brown and it's too dark to see what is going on. But we can use a little CGI magic to view the precipitation. While we wait for precipitation to complete, let's take the opportunity to depopulate the core, getting it ready for either storage or the next refining. Remove the cathode cap and put it aside. Because of variations in the pores of the molecular sieve, some of the smaller metallic atoms, like copper and zinc, will pass through the sieve and plate onto the cathode. So it is common to see a brown film on its surface. This film will have no effect and can be either left on the cathode or wiped off. Decant and discard the salt water from the cathode chamber. This water may be either blue or have no color and it will smell like ammonia. If you like, you can leave the pouch in the core. However, you may want to retrieve some of its contents. If refining rings, the stones, and also some undissolved portions of the rings, will be left behind in the pouch. If not retrieved each time, these materials may interfere with the action of the stir bar. You may also find brown particles, or mud, in the pouch. This is very high carat gold, typically between 22 and 24 carat. Carat gold consists of gold, plus alloy. While the gold content will not oxidize, the base metals, primarily copper, can be badly oxidized by melting or casting. The quantity of this material left in the pouch will depend entirely upon how oxidized the base metals in the carat gold were prior to refining. The more oxidized the base metal content, the more mud left in the pouch. This mud does not need to be retrieved after each refining. And you can leave it in the pouch for as long as you like. So, how will we know when precipitation is finished? The precious metal detection test will tell us. This test is both highly effective, as well as easy to run. Using the pipette, let's take a sample of the solution and test for the presence of dissolved gold. Place a drop or two on the spot plate mirror. Now, add a drop or two of precious metal test liquid. If any gold remains dissolved in the acid, the color will rapidly turn purple or black. You can run this test as often as you like. Just be sure to clean the pipette, inside and out, between tests. Cleaning ensures 
that you don't get a false positive. When the test yields no color change, then no gold remains dissolved in solution, and precipitation is complete. Turn off the heat, and then decant your solution into a bucket or other container. Take care not to pour off particles of gold with your solution. The first rinse is with ammonia. Regular supermarket ammonia is fine, as long as it isn't the sudsin kind. Add enough ammonia to cover your gold mud. The ammonia will turn blue. Give the particles a chance to settle, and then decant the ammonia. Save the solution, so that you can check it later, for particles. Fill the beaker with water. Tap water is fine. If you would like, you can give the water a stir. Then give the gold particles a chance to settle. Decant the water. Saving it to check later, for gold particles. We'll want to rinse one more time with water, before checking to make certain that the gold has been thoroughly rinsed. The test for impurities, is very similar to the test for dissolved gold. And it has a similar degree of sensitivity, 4 parts impurities per million parts of solution. This test however, uses aqua ammonia test solution. Tilt your beaker, so that the small amount of water, clinging to the mud, rolls down, to form a small puddle, in the corner of the beaker. Using the pipette, take a sample of the water and place a drop or two on the spot plate. Now, add a drop or two, of ammonia test liquid. Any change to blue, even the palest shade of blue, indicates impurities, and another rinse is required. When the test runs clean, with no hint of color change, you can do a final rinse. This time, with a small amount of distilled water. This will wash away any minerals left behind by the tap water. To dry the gold mud, place the beaker on the hot plate, and turn it on. Any distilled water overlaying, and clinging to the gold mud, will evaporate, leaving a dry, brown, gold powder, that will pour out like sand, melting. So now you have highly refined gold powder, and it looks like, well, it looks like dirt. To restore the beautiful, anisotropic gold color, you will need to melt the powder. Typically, melting is done by torch, so that is the method we will illustrate. Here is what you will need. Melting torch. Use a torch made for this purpose. The common propane torch simply will not provide enough BTUs to do the job. Crucible. You can use a standard clay graphite crucible, a ceramic cup shaped crucible, or you can use a burno ceramic crucible. Crucible rest. Any refractory material, like a brick or a cinder block for example, will do the job. Flux. Common fluxes that are typically used include borax, boric acid, or a combination of the two. Alcohol. Preparing your crucible. Select either an unused crucible, or one that has only been used to melt refined gold. When using a fresh crucible, you must first flux it, sealing its pores, thus preventing it from absorbing gold. Heat your crucible to red hot. Sprinkle flux on the inside of the crucible. A mixture of 50% borax and 50% boric acid, is the most commonly used flux. 
the flux will melt rapidly, forming a thin glaze and sealing the crucible's pores. Wrap your gold powder in jeweler's tissue paper. If that is not available, you can use a small section of a paper towel. Soak the wrapped gold powder in alcohol and place it in your crucible. The paper and alcohol will help secure the powder so that the air currents produced by the torch flame don't blow it away. Both paper and alcohol will burn away, leaving no trace. Melt your metal. When it flows like water, pour it into an ingot mold to make a bar of gold, or pour it into ice water to make shot. Why refine polishing sweeps? The typical return, when refining polishing sweeps, is one ounce of gold for every pound of sweeps. The typical return, when sending the same sweeps to be refined by a refining company, is 3 grams of gold. The difference in return is thousands of dollars. It's well worth the trouble of processing the sweeps yourself. The first step in refining polishing sweeps is to burn the sweeps. The purpose of this video is to illustrate the correct way to burn polishing sweeps. Standard methods of sweeps burnout are ineffective and produce a product similar in appearance to lava rock. In that form, the sweeps are actually more difficult to refine than untreated sweeps. The proper method of sweeps burnout is no more difficult than the standard method. Additionally, there is less smell and less smoke. Polishing sweeps consists of lint, paper, polishing compound, and gold. The polishing compound is composed of the binder, which is a grease called stearic acid, and silicate or grit. When the sweeps are thoroughly burned, all the carbon and hydrocarbons will be converted to carbon dioxide, leaving just the grit and the metal behind. The key to a proper burn is air. Without sufficient air, the hydrocarbon compounds change to carbon, not carbon dioxide. Effectively, you will be creating coal. Additionally, there will be lots of smoke and smell. In the traditional method, Sweeps are packed into steel containers. The sweeps will be many inches, and sometimes, feet, thick. Air simply cannot reach the vast majority of the sweeps. The proper technique is not much different, but it is critical. And the results are very, very different. Place the sweeps in shallow, steel or stoneware pans. The level of the sweeps should be no more than 1 to 2 inches for dense sweeps. And no more than 4 to 5 inches for fluffy sweeps. Place the pans in your oven. You can stack them, but do not nest the pans. Make sure that the sweeps are fully exposed to the air. Leave the oven door slightly ajar. This is critical. The sweeps need a continuous source of air, without which thorough burning will not take place. Set your oven temperature for 1350 degrees Fahrenheit. That is about 730 degrees Celsius. Typical burnout time is about 1 to 2 hours. When the smoke stops, the process is done. But leave the oven on for about one half hour just to make sure. Typically, the burned sweeps will be grey in colour. They can vary in colour, depending largely on the polishing compounds that were used. However, they should not be black, and there should be no lumps. Black, lumpy sweeps indicates an incomplete burnout. No worries if you have black, lumpy sweeps. Just crush the lumps and then burn again.
A heated solution of lye and water will dissolve silicates, rubber from rubber wheels, polishing compounds, and organic material. It will even deoxidize your metal. When mixing, always use cold water. The lye will react with the cold water, warming it. Add lye to the water until the water is so saturated that no more lye dissolves. Using a stainless steel pot as a receptacle, mix one cup of bench sweeps or one cup of burned polishing sweeps for every 10 cups of lye water. Simmer the solution for about an hour. Lye is very, very corrosive, especially when hot. So be sure to wear appropriate protective gear, such as rubber gloves, face shield, etc., when using it. Decant the solution and save it, so that you can check later to see if some gold was decanted with the solution. Add some water to the waste solution to thin it out and make it easier to check later for gold particles. To rinse the clean sweeps, add fresh water. You may want to stir. Then let the gold settle, and decant the water into the same bucket where you saved the lye water. Without delay, dry your gold by placing the pot on the hot plate. If not melting right away, Store the gold in a sealed container to prevent oxidation of your metal. When refining platinum ingots, the platinum content can be no greater than 20% for normal processing time. So adding alloy to your metal is pretty standard. Both platinum and gold refining begin the same way. However, no catalyst is required. Alloys will go into solution. But the platinum metals will convert to insoluble compounds, called platinum group chlorides. These compounds, typically red or orange, will adhere to the outside of the ingot, and then slough off, and fall to the bottom of the pouch. When the process is complete, remove the core. The solution will not contain dissolved platinum group metals and can be discarded. Remove the pouch and place it in the empty beaker. For this part of the process, you will need aqua ammonia, also called ammonia hydroxide. This solution is similar to household ammonia, but about 10 times stronger. Add enough ammonia to cover your platinum group salts. When all the PGMs have dissolved, remove the pouch. Add hydrazine. The amount required is the same as the total weight of your platinum group metals. The various platinum metals. Platinum, palladium, rhodium, iridium, and so on, will precipitate in different time frames, with about one half hour separating the conclusion of each precipitation with the initiation of the next. Recover each PGM at the conclusion of each precipitation. Then set aside the platinum group metals will precipitate in a variety of colors, depending upon the element, and the ionic form of the element. Additionally, both the shade of the color, light or dark, as well as the vibrance, will vary, depending upon the size and shape of the precipitated particles, and how wet, or dry they are. These precipitates are platinum chloride compounds, and the chloride must be driven off, before they are melted. But before we do that, let's rinse them clean of any ammonia residue. For this, we'll use distilled water, 
because we don't want to leave any residue of minerals from either tap or spring water. After rinsing with either distilled or demineralized water, place the beaker on a hot plate, drying the mud. As the platinum chloride dries, white smoke, steam, is generated. Once the chloride is dry, the smoke will turn yellow or brown, indicating that the chloride is being driven off, leaving pure platinum powder. This step is critical. Any attempt to melt the platinum, while it is still a chloride, will simply vaporize the platinum. Once the colored smoke is no longer being generated, you can melt the platinum. Melting platinum powder is most easily done in an induction furnace. This is the conclusion of this training video. If you have any questions regarding the refining process, or any other process, please feel free to contact Shaw. We will be happy to help you. Remember, there is no such thing as a stupid question, except the one you don't ask.